I think we're going to transition um, to Roberta to give her uh, the time to get through her uh, discussion of the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program. Um, Bobby started with the DNR in 1999 in the Wildlife Program and then transitioned to the Community Finance Assistance Program in 2014, where she is currently the grant program manager for the Recreation Recreational Trails Program, the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program, and the County's Conservation AIDS Grant Program. Bobby received a BS in Wildlife Management and Biology from UW Stevens Point, go Pointers, and an MS in Biology from Northern Michigan University. Looks like we're getting her PowerPoint queued up and ready to go right now. Please help me welcome Bobby, and she is going to discuss the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program. Good morning, can you hear me? We can indeed. Okay, for some reason I can't get the video to come back on. Uh, let's see here, there we go, there we go. Okay, as Patrick mentioned, I am the Grant Program Manager for the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program, the Recreational Trails Grant Program, and the County Conservation Aid Grant Program. And I am located here in Green Bay. So as similar to the surface water um, program that was just mentioned, you can find our webpage in a couple of ways. You can type in this URL at the top here into your browser, or you can go to dnr.wi.gov Click on the little um, magnifying glass to bring up the search box, type in recreational boating facilities, and it, the first result that shows up should be the recreational boating facilities grant program link. So we're going to talk a little bit about program specifics. This grant program is authorized by statute 30.92 of the Wisconsin statutes and chapters NR7, 1.90 and 1.91 of the Wisconsin Administrative Code. The purpose of this grant program is for the development of recreational boating facilities and related activities by providing state cost sharing assistance to governmental units and qualified lake associations. Formerly, the program's funding source was a portion of an excise tax on gasoline consumed for marine purposes, but back in 2007, the funding source switched to the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Program. The funding is divided up into 40% for Great Lakes projects, 40% for Inland Lakes projects, and 20% for discretionary, meaning there's no specific designation for that portion of the funding. On April 1 of each year, any funds that are remaining are combined and con are considered discretionary. The program is administered by the Department of Natural Resources and supervised by the Wisconsin Waterways Commission. The commission is composed of five members representing Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, the Mississippi River, Lake Winnebago Watershed, and the Wisconsin Inland Waters. The grant project managers receive and score the applications, which are then sent to the commissioners who review them. Applicants then present their projects to the commission at a funding meeting. The commission establishes feasibility, determines the priority of projects, and determines the rate of cost sharing for the feasible projects. Funding meetings are held four times a year if funding is still available in the fourth quarter. If there is no funding available, then there's only three funding meetings for the year. If it is a budget signing year, the first quarter funding meeting may be delayed or combined with the second quarter funding meeting. The commission has established a policy that any eligible project application with a total project cost of $15,000 or less, which would mean a grant award of $7,500 or less, can be accepted and funded at any time and does not need to be presented to the commission at a funding meeting as long as it's an eligible project. Currently, the allocation for this program is $2.5 million from the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Program plus $400,000 from a segregated account annually. But since this is a budget year, that amount of, from the Knowles Nelson may be changing. Cost share is normally 50%, but can go up to 80% if certain criteria are met. Eligible applicants includes towns, villages, cities, counties, town sanitary districts, public inland lake protection and rehabilitation districts, and qualified lake associations. Application deadlines are June 1, September 1, November 1, February 1 of each year. 
Eligible project applications are scored and ranked by the following criteria. Distance from other recreational boating facilities, facilities demand for safe boating facilities, whether it's a new or existing facility, um, the cost share percentage being contributed by the application and the location of the proposed project within the region. I'm going to talk a little bit about some eligible types of projects. The first one we're going to talk about is construction and rehabilitation project, which includes facilities such as ramps and boarding docks required to gain access to the water. Harbors of refuge structures such as bulkheads and breakwaters necessary to provide safe water conditions. Then there's construction dredging um, to provide safe water deaths at the boat launch. This type of dredging project is only eligible when it is associated with project development. This grant program does not pay for maintenance dredging. Other eligible items include support facilities such as parking lots and signage, sanitary facilities, fencing and security lighting for the convenience of boaters. These pictures are before and after photos of a renovated boat launch. The grantee renovated the launch site and parking lot and added an ADA compliant canoe kayak launch to their launch facility. But that you can see at the time this photo was taken, they had already removed the canoe kayak launch for winter storage. Another type of eligible project is transient docking. And transient means that a boat may only be docked for 15 days or left. So you can see these are before and after photos for a transient docking project. Another type of dredging project is called a channel dredging project. And this is for um, dredging of an inland water channel for recreational boating. These types of projects may receive funding not more than once in 10 years for dredging of the same channel. The dredging project must support a launch facility and meet other criteria such as depth, width, and slope. Also eligible are costs to improve and repair locks and facilities that provide access between waterways for operators of recreational watercraft. This program also funds the acquisition and rehabilitation of trash skimming equipment that collects and removes floating trash and debris from a waterway. This includes skimming equipment, conveyors, and trailers. It also funds the acquisition or rehabilitation of weed harvesting equipment that is necessary to cut and remove aquatic plants. Eligible items include harvesters, conveyors, trailers, and GPS units. The last type of eligible project is navigation, navigational aids. This includes aids to navigation and regulatory markers, including the cost of appropriate ground tackle. Applications for these navigational aids um, projects are accepted at any time, and they do not go before the commission. This is a list of the regional grant project managers and the counties they serve for the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program. Annie Leckler covers the Northern Region, Gina Keenan covers the West Central Region, Jessica Tyrion covers the Northeast Region, Sarah DeBryan covers the South East Region, and Cheryl Housley and Mary Rothemeyer cover the South Central Region. I'm just gonna to touch base on a few federal um, recreational boating grant programs because a lot of times, um, the SFR boat access can be matched to the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program. So these are some federal programs that um, come from, they're funded by the Sports Fish Restoration and Boating Trust Fund. The trust fund receives its res revenue from excise tax on sport fishing equipment and electric motors, import duties on fishing tackle, yachts and pleasure craft, a portion of gasoline tax attributable to motorboats and small engines, and interest earned on trust funds. Cost share for these federal programs is up to 75%. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Sports Fish Restoration Boat Access Program. It says this grant may be used for motorboat access projects. Eligible components include boat ramp construction and renovation, along with related amenities such as parking lots, accessible paths, lighting, restroom facilities, 
channel dredging and feasibility studies. Allocation is around $250,000 per year and the deadline for these applications is February 1. Another sports fish restoration one is the fishing piers. And this grant is for the construction of facilities that create or add to public access for shore fishing. Facilities that provide access to, the, access to and amenities for fishing pier structure may also be eligible. Allocation is around $200,000 a year and the application deadline is October 1. Another one is called the Boating Infrastructure Grant Program. It's for the construction and renovation and maintenance of boating infrastructure facilities for transient recreational vessels at least 26 feet in length. The allocation is divided up into two tiers. The first tier is called the state allocation, which provides up to $200,000 per year and projects are competitively ranked within the state. The second tier is a national allocation and it provides up to 1.5 million per project, but those projects are competitively ranked at the national level. Deadlines for these applications is June 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Eligible applicants include public and private agencies, marinas and other facilities that plan to construct, renovate and maintain boating infrastructure tie up facilities solely for transient recreational vessels 26 feet or more in length and or produce information and education materials specific to the boating infrastructure grant program or projects funded with boating infrastructure grant funding such as charts, cruising guides and brochures. And we also have the Clean Vessel Act. This is a nationwide competitive federal grant program that provides funding to states as part of an effort to clean up the nation's waterways. Eligible projects include construction of mooring buoys and or day docks, construction, renovation, operation, and maintenance of pump boat and dump stations, including floating restrooms either not connected or connected to land structures that are used solely by boaters. It also funds education of, or information programs to educate and inform recreational boaters about environmental pollution resulting from sewage discharges from vessels. And also eligible activities include involved with holding, transporting, and getting sewage treatment facilities to accept sewage. This has a nationwide allocation of about $10 million annually. Currently, applications are accepted at any time, but I believe that is going to be changing um, in the near future. Eligible applicants for this program include private marina or business or local units of government. The grant program manager for this program is Faith Murray, and this is her contact information on the slide. Any questions? Any? Any questions out there? Let me see. I do not see any at this I time. I see one, Patrick. Oh, you know what? I'm, I can't see the uh, Q&A. I was looking at the chat. Q&A, yeah. No, no. Go ahead, Allison. You can sure. see it. I, I don't have it up, please. Yep. Um, so the first one I can address right away. Uh, the question is, is LMPN money? So that's the money that goes to counties and their designated agents to support um, aquatic invasive species prevention, education and outreach activities. That is not split equally among the counties. It is split following an allocation model that relates to resource quantity, resource condition, how active the network is in that area and the number of people that live in the area and the economy. So we kind of account for all those factors and depending on like the conditions and the quantity of resources and people in your county, you would get a different amount of money. There's uh, details available, reach out to me and I can share with you how that works. And then the second question relates to eligible costs. Our Lake District does annual AIS monitoring and cost varies depending on the study. So there's point intercept surveys, there's early detection and response surveys, and those have different costs. Is there funding available for this activity? And I would say yes, there is. Um, <laughs> the surface water planning um, program is 
where you'll want to head. So there's $10,000 grants available to do exactly what you're talking about, watershed, uh, sorry, water body assessments and surveys. Um, it is a competitive program still, so you'll need to remember that it will be important to kind of rationalize the work. And that really means covering why you should collect the data, how it's going to be used, and how it can you know, influence uh, future decision making, for example. And then we have for the RBF program for Bobby. Does DNR have anyone who can help look at appropriate repairs or construction of in-water ramps before hiring an engineering firm or contractor? Um, hmm, good question. You know, we mainly deal with the grant aspect of it. Um, usually there's somebody on staff on a local unit government that's um, qualified to serve, you know, take into account what needs to be repaired and um, what works out there. There are some guidance on that we provide for, you know, slope and stuff like that, but either it's going through a consultant or sometimes the local units of government have someone on staff that can um, do that kind of work to assess what needs to be fixed. Um, like I said, we just deal mainly with the grant and we don't tell you how to do your project, but we do provide some guidance. guidance. And there's also a guide out there called the SOBA guide. Um, it's, uh, I'm trying to think, standard operating, standard operating, standard operations of boating access. I think that's something what it's called, but you can Google it. Um, they have a pretty good guidance on there for um, uh, building boating launches, facilities, um, and that kind of information. They have contacts on there um, who might be able to help with that kind of situation. I just Thanks, thought Marie. I'd share the results of your first poll. It looks like 48% um, was the high number there, C, in terms of people's familiarity with the surface water grant program. So that's have received funding, but maybe haven't managed multiple projects or multiple years of funding. Okay, so correct. cool. And then A was pretty strong too, little or no experience. So that's a, it's great that you are here today oh, to hear the story. And then let me uh, check in on your second poll. If you just give me a second. Maybe you want to scour for other questions as I pull that other yeah. one up. Yep, there is one about what we fund under the AIS control program. Um, do most use DASH to manage EWM? I, you know, I don't know the precise breakdown. I not, No, I don't think so. Um, a lot employ um mixed approaches actually so there will be like some volunteer hand pulling or diver assisted suction harvesting or um smaller scale fast acting herbicide treatment some larger scale herbicide treatments it's really a range um yeah i see i would say most of them employ integrated pest management I, I, all of them it, so that's multiple techniques and then I would just share uh, what best describes you and your organization. Your second poll question, 22% uh, were local units of government. 43% were a water body group. 13% oh, a not-for-profit organization. Cool. Uh, about 9% professional service providers. Just moved on me, 8%. A few, 8% uh, college folks, a few individuals and, and so on. So. Um, that's an answer to that poll. No, oh, thank you for letting us know about you. That helps us plan the level of these talks for the future. So it's nice to see all the lake groups in uh, attendance. Well, as was mentioned, um, these teams of folks who work around these grants are, are great about helping folks at the community level work through these grant processes and get your legs under you and move forward with putting an application in. So I encourage you to reach out uh, to, to the teams here and to Bobby uh, about the different grant programs and hopefully uh, we'll see new grants coming in down the road. I wanna thank our speakers for this morning and uh, Next up, we are going to go to a short break and then we're back at 10 o'clock for our next session. So thank you very much uh, to our speakers and to everyone who attended. And I hope you have the, a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, speakers.
Thank you. Thanks, Madeline. Thank you, Bet. You got it. We need the Jeopardy theme song to play in the background. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. To